After owning a Mac Mini for about 4 months, I realized that it is not just about having an affordable Apple computer that is strong enough to help me work and walk me through my daily tasks, but the versatility of customizing the freedom of choosing what accessory I want to use with my computer. So in this video, let me walk you through my 5 favorite gadgets that I use on my Mac Mini M4 and how they actually help me to improve my productivity. Before we get started, Funded Culture, this is not a sponsored video, so you're watching my real life experience. So first on the list, the Mac Force Stand 2, an aluminum stand K from Zira. And as you might already notice, the design is inspired by the 7000 Mac Pro tower. And unlike all the version made out of plastic that look kind of fragile and funny, this K is crafted from a single block of aluminum and it weighs almost 7 pounds. The build quality is very good. When you're holding it, it gives you the feelings of strength and durability. Add to that is the material, aluminum. Always bring a clean, sleek, and premium look to the product. And of course, I wouldn't buy this K just for the beauty of it. There's more that this K could offer and one of it is the help with heat dissipation. So I like the ideas of putting the Mac in this 10K with the fan staying uncovered, creating more spacious space so it could breathe better and less pressures on the cooling system. Also wrapping around the case are many small vents and grills that give even more space for airflow, accelerating the process of heat dissipation. And if you're still worrying about the heat, there is also a thermal silicon pad on the bottom where it helps to transferring all of the remaining heat from the Mac Mini to the case. For installation, just put your Mac in between the protective tray and then easily slide it right in. Close the lid and there you go, the Mac Pro Mini is right in front of you. This case was made a little bit taller than the Mac Mini size just because it spares you a small compartment on the top for you to store your external SSD over here. So for example, this is the cable, right? You just put it through this hole and then you plug it right in here. Boom. And then plug into your external SSD like this. But unfortunately, my size was too big. The, the external SSD was too big. So if you plan to do so, make sure you check all of the metrics and the measures, uh, I think around 2.2 inch for the width. And uh, on the market, there's a lot of small SSDs, so you don't have to worry about it. And after you put everything in, just close the lid. Beautiful and very tidy. And I want to show you this cool thing. This is actually a power button for your Mac Mini. And if you are tired of flipping your Mac to turn it on and off, this might be the side for you to buy this. So check out the link in the description. I think it's worth the price, worth the hype. Uh, it's great. The next one on my list is this Mini Sopuru Hub, an accessory that I believe any Mac Mini user should have because it's result one of the most annoying thing on this Mac Mini, which is like a ports. So we all know the majority piece of tech out there are using USB Type-C standard to transferring and powering their device, right? because it's very compact and it has a reversible design. But at the same time, it's limited to the type of accessory that it can connect it to. For example, all accessory like uh, printers, uh, wire mouse, or a keyboard are still using USB-A port. So this hub can extend your connection to one more USB-C 3.2 than two, two USB-A 2.0, one TF card and another SD card. And if you take a look at the bottom, there's also a built-in SSD enclosure, which is compatible with most of the M2, SATA, or NVMe SSD. So everything is built into the base and will be connected to your Mac Mini through this single USB-C cable. Now, the only thing to complain about this dock might be the SSD read and write speed. Upon my test, the speed is not really great. I mean, it's not faster when compared to the internal SSD, but if you don't transfer 100 to 1 terabyte file daily, you probably won't notice any big differences. Now, as someone who has a multiple device and has to testing and moving files and application frequently, the next gadgets that I can't live without is this SSD enclosure. This is the Zyk enclosure that I pair with the Samsung 990 SSD. It supports Thunderbolt 4 standard, which can transfer up to 40 gigabyte per second, even beating the internal SSD in this comparison. 
Having said that, working with medias or fire directly from this external drive is 100% possible. Tasks that I'm doing daily are editing videos with external footage is working fantastic with no delays or crashing in middle of the work. Even in a scenario where I install a huge application like Parallels, a Windows virtual machine and then playing game directly from it, the gaming experience remains smooth and responsive. And if you want to see the full test about installing Windows, playing game directly from this external drive, make sure to check out this video before this video, okay? And one of the things that I really like about this enclosure is the slick design with aluminum. Wrap around the case body are many horizontal vents that work like an active heat sink to keep the enclosure in the chill temperature. Because if you're doing intensive tasks for a while, it does get warm up a bit. So just like any Thunderbolt 4 SSD enclosure, they does give you one cable for connectivity. This is a USB 4 cable. But the special for this enclosure is they actually have a built-in uh, cable slot and they give you an extra one. So it's super convenient. Uh, it's short, not too long and you make sure you never forget and losing. This long cable just for another scenario which is need longer connectivity, which is nice. And since we mentioned about game earlier, I want to take this video as the opportunity to say this. The Magic Mouse is the worst mouse ever when it comes to gaming. So Magic Mouse is designed with the whole multi-touch survey on the top, which lets you to perform certain gestures with your fingertip, just like a trackpad. And just because it is a solid piece, so it is impossible to use both left and right click at the same time. That might feel small for most people. But let's say in a playing game scenario, you can aim and shoot your enemy at the same time. So guys, that is the main reason why I got this Basilisk V3 mouse right here. One of the reasons to buy it, because it had a better economics on my hand, better sounds. Also, it has some of the uh, additional buttons on the side, which is I never experienced with my Magic Mouse throughout the years. This mouse is equipped with most advanced technology with 18K DPI optical sensor, which offer an extreme sensitivity. So if you used to play FPS game like CSGO or Battlefield 4 and needed a quick spin or aiming, this is the mouse for you. Also, this V3 is equipped with Razer Zen 2 mechanical switches, which sound and feel very nice. This is a wireless mouse you can either connect through a Bluetooth or use this little USB dongle to plug in directly. And yes, as you notice, this is a battery based mouse which is not rechargeable. And before you get too excited and want to go and buy this mouse right away, let me give you some of the tips. Because uh, this mouse is great, but it actually has some limitation when it comes to the connectivity to Mac OS. Uh, it, yes, it still can connect uh, like easily to the Bluetooth, but uh, there's a limitation in terms of control the, the RGB light on the grill. And also, uh, you cannot assign the function for this button. Because the problem is, Razer has a standalone app called Sign Up, which is used for their mail customizing, and it's not working on macOS. I try many different ways, including some third party apps, which led me to assign the key function but it's still limited when compared to the original app. So for me, it's not a big problem, but I think it's better for you to know before making a purchase. So I was thinking, what is the ultimate way for in-game control? And it has to be fully compatible with my Mac Mini, or at least Mac OS. And I realized I have an Xbox controller. Let's check it out. So this is the Vo Xbox Wireless Controller, which is my dominant choice when it comes to gaming. It brings me a lot of comfort, not to mention that it has an ergonomic design with a perfect size, not too big or too small. It's just right and fit in the palm of my hand. There's never feeling far to reach or press any button. The small details also make this a great product. Both sides of the controller are covered with a grip texture, making it feel very firm when holding. So I have no problem with slippery or sweaty hand with this cool design. 
Also, this works with basically all of the game, whether it's run through Crossover, Parallels, or even PUBG Mobile to Moomoo Player Pro. Just plug and play, super convenient. And additionally, I think one of the perks when playing games with the controller is haptic feedback, which always make the gaming experience more dynamic and responsive. So most of the AAA games are supported. I tried GTA V, and I can tell you, the feelings when you're shooting or punching someone on the face feel so real. So if you are anxious about your life, just like myself, buying this controller could help. So what do you think? Do you like any accessory that I mentioned in the videos? If you like any of those, just check out the link in the description. This is not affiliate or anything. I just show my daily use of this accessory. This is a real life experience and I hope you like it. So make sure you let me know in the comment and tell me if you have any question about this accessory and I always happy to have. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.